Since the new ground effect regulations were introduced in 2022, Mercedes has struggled massively. Previous to the 2022 season, the Silver Arrows won eight Constructors Championships in a row since the introduction of the Turbo Hybrid era in 2014, guiding Hamilton to six of his seven world championships. However, Mercedes have only won one race in the ground effect era. George Russell led home a Mercedes 1-2 at the 2022 Sao Paulo Grand Prix. Hamilton, meanwhile, has not won a race since the 2021 Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. While the Mercedes W15 has been easier to handle for Hamilton and Russell, it hasn't delivered the expected performance step. Mercedes has yet to score higher than fifth, and after a double retirement in Australia, it has fallen 29 points behind third-placed McLaren. The disappointment persuaded Hamilton to make the move to Ferrari in 2025, leaving Mercedes after being with them since 2013. Toto Wolff was equally blunt in his assessment, describing it as brutally painful, conceding it was a fair question to ask if it was time he stepped down from the role and that he felt neither positive nor optimistic about his team's situation. Even putting aside the two DNFs, the Brackley squad has struggled for performance and across the season starts vastly different circuits of Bahrain, Jeddah and Melbourne. Some worrying trends have come to light. In the heat of Saudi Arabia, it already became apparent that the W15 struggles for grip in high-speed corners, aggravated by bouncing. And according to technical director Allison, a trend has now emerged, the team is less competitive in warmer conditions. The latest data point was the gap in competitiveness between Australia's free practice three and qualifying. In FP3, which was held in the cooler morning, Hamilton and Russell were almost on the pace of Red Bull and Ferrari. Yet in afternoon qualifying, when Ferrari and Red Bull both found chucks of lap time, Mercedes appeared to plateau, with Russell and Hamilton qualifying 7th and 11th respectively. Addressing the key takeaways from the weekend, Mercedes trackside engineering director Andrew Shovlin explained the team had been trying to establish how to better understand its car. The big program we were looking at was to try and get the car a bit more predictable through the weekend. What we found is that we can get it in a window, but if the wind changes, the track temp changes, it quickly falls out of it, and that was leading to poor performance in race and qualifying. There's no doubt that we're not where we need to be at the moment, we know that, and we know that we've got work to do. Working with the car across the weekend was easier, the balance of the car was more consistent, there are issues that we need to get on top of, and get on top of quickly. Recent Mercedes cars have been plagued by unpredictability, resulting in drastically different performance from race to race and even session to session. As Hamilton highlighted at the Australian Grand Prix, something Shovlin sees as improving following the program in Japan. But certainly, we seem to have a more stable platform, one where its behavior through the whole weekend is more consistent. But as I said, we know that there's work to do and we'll be working on that immediately. Despite the disappointment of that result, Wolf was trying to ensure a positive outlook on the situation, referring to their Suzuka outing as testing. And it seems that this has led to an important breakthrough in their understanding of the W15. Speaking to the media after the race, Wolf had some pep in his step as he explained how the W15 has shown clear signs of improvement despite the tough result. When you look at the results, seventh and ninth in qualifying, and in the race, that's clearly not good. Everybody knows that but we've definitely made a big step forward in where and how we want to run the car and in our understanding. It was one of the worst tracks for us last year, and this year, we were pretty close to the front runners. Not Max, but the guys behind in qualifying, that came as a surprise. We were very quick through the SS, whereas last year, we were nowhere. In the race, when you look at how it unfolded, we were trying to make a one-stop stick and probably over-managed the tires and had an atrocious first stint but we had a very competitive second and third stint, the moment we basically did what the others did, and that would have looked completely different. Seventh and ninth are just not good, full stop. There's nothing to add, nothing to make rosy, but I think we're going away from Suzuka. Not happy with the result, but definitely there's more to come. With Mercedes seemingly happier with cooler track conditions, as seen in qualifying, Wolf doubts the warmer conditions of the Grand Prix played a role in affecting the pace of the W15 over the race distance. Instead, Wolf pointed the finger at the strategic choice of running a long stint on the hards to make the one stop work. It was three degrees difference in track temperature between stint one and stint two. So, as much as I believe there is a relationship between our performance with the track temperature, I don't think it was the reason for our off performance in the first stint. 
It was trying to try to extend it to one stop, losing lots of times with the overtakes more than the track temperature. Asked whether the performance is within the W15, but the lap time isn't corresponding, Wolf said all the data shows the car should be stronger than it has shown in the first few races of the season, as the team's correlation problems have hindered their progress. Everything over these two years, which you have seen, points to that there should be much more downforce than we believe it is. We've measured the downforce, and it is there. We're just not able to extract the lead time out of it that we should, and that simulations have shown us, and it's not trivial. You might think, what the hell? Imagine what we think. With Mercedes now so far behind the eight ball, whispers have emerged. The team may abandon its efforts under the current F1 car design rules and begin to focus on the challenges of the 2026 big regulation change. Of course, this is not allowed under FIA regulations, as teams must not begin any wind tunnel work for 2026 before January 2025. Further, the actual aero specifications have not been finalized, with suggestions, some F1 team simulations are presently showing the cars of the future to be undrivable. When it was suggested to Wolf, the time may come when the team look to 2026 and abandon their current efforts. The Mercedes boss was adamant. We are Mercedes. We cannot completely abandon the current regulations and continue to perform at the level we are at the moment. That's not the ambition of the brand, nor our own and our partners. So, no, I think you've got to continue to push, continue to form your understanding. Wolf explains until the regulations are finalized, there's little they or any other team can do. Recent F1 simulations reveal by restricting the movable aero parts to the rear wing of the 2026 cars results in a huge shift in the aero balance when the low drag version is deployed. With just over three months before the regulations must be finalized, the FIA has decided to now investigate the use of a movable front wing in tandem with the rear. Wolf admits Mercedes will be on the earlier side when it comes to their 2026 designs, as they seek to overcome the likes of Ferrari and McLaren once again. If your expectation is eventually to race for wins and championships, then you can say we're in a bit of a no man's land because Max and Red Bull are far ahead. We are in this bunch, but it's not satisfying for either team that is fighting for P2, P3, or P4. I've always said that if I was to look from a pure sporting point of view, it is P1 what matters and not P2 slash P3 slash P4. But this is a reality that we are facing at the moment and we're trying to do the best out of this new reality. That our aim is to beat our direct competitors whilst acknowledging that somebody is just doing a better job and setting a benchmark that we eventually need to set ourselves again on whether we're able to win races this year. And I wouldn't want to let that ambition go and certainly not next year. If Mercedes are to be competitive from 2026 onwards, they must get to grips with the ground effect car design, which is here to stay. The mechanical gremlins, which are causing the car to handle poorly, can be engineered out of the W15, but will take time and use up precious budget resources. When the choice does arrive between spending money on the current failing project or on funding the 2026 design for Mercedes, the decision will be a no-brainer.